How you doing guys? We are finally back with another Star Wars review video. Sorry that the wait for this video was so long. My next video will be a versus video. I posted a poll on what versus it should be. Unfortunately, not many people voted on it. So I'm going to repost it with this video. Then based off of that, I'll choose my next versus. Chances are it'll be the same one. Please like this video, subscribe, and check out my other channel. The link will be in the description. Before we get started, I don't believe any of the things I'm saying are objective. They are all just my opinions. Also, Please share your thoughts on Ahsoka with me in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so first let's get into my ratings for each individual episode. The first two episodes were pretty underwhelming. They were solid episodes though. My hype for Star Wars wasn't the highest at the time, so I'm probably much more critical than I would have been like a year ago. I'll still give them both a 7 out of 10 though. The third episode was pretty good. I'd give it an 8 out of 10. This was the episode I realized the acting was a bit weird, and Sabine's training was odd, and a lot of the story was contrived. The fourth episode was really good. It was exciting the whole time, I liked the planet they were on, and the fight scenes in this episode were the best in the show, along with the fifth episode. It was cool seeing Jason too. I thought this episode really picked up the pace of the show, and I'll give it a 9 out of 10. I loved the fifth episode of Ahsoka. It was great seeing Anakin and the Clone Wars flashback scenes were dope. Sabine's choice of giving Balin the map added some much needed depth to the show. Ahsoka finally gets some character and begins to not be annoying. The world between worlds was cool as well. The Pergil were awesome. I always love seeing them. I think you could argue Anakin shouldn't be in this episode, and we'll get into that later. This episode immensely increased my interest in the show, so I'm giving this episode a 9.5 out of 10. The sixth episode of the show was pretty good. Nothing crazy. C-3PO was there for fan service, but it was a cool moment. I don't mind it. It was very cool seeing Thrawn and Ezra again. The Great Mothers were pretty cool to see, and the Death Troopers were badass. I'll give this episode a 7 out of 10. The seventh episode was a change in pace. It wasn't the most exciting, but a bit more practical. I'd give it a 7 out of 10. The 8th episode was pretty good, but fairly predictable. It wasn't the best finale or the worst, but it was fun to watch and exciting the whole time. 8 out of 10. So with that out of the way, let's get into the pros of the show, then we'll get into the cons. It had some pretty good world building, and introduced us to some new planets and a new galaxy even. Ezra was really cool to see in live action. I liked his character, I think he was pretty spot on to how he used to be. He was wiser than he used to be, and fought differently, but not much else changed. Which makes sense, because for the last 10 years, he hasn't really interacted with any people besides those crab people so he wouldn't have too many life-changing experiences he was fun to see and i loved him the only little things i thought were odd were that his eyes were very blue to the point that it looked kind of weird but who cares really also his lightsaber color changed to blue which i feel like doesn't make much sense i believe especially since he's more peaceful and wise he also utilizes the force more than ever so him having a green lightsaber would make a lot of sense. Now on to Thrawn. Maybe he's had smarter moments. But I thought he was really cool. When we saw him, he was very limited with what resources he had. So it makes sense due to the fact that he didn't have the best choices to combat Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra. Well, if he had the Great Mothers face him, then I think the Great Mothers would handle business, but I don't think it was worth the risk, since the Great Mothers were Thrawn's greatest allies. He looked just like he did in Rebels. His voice was obviously the same because Lars Mikkelsen played him both times, and I think he translated very well to live action. I'm Pretty excited to see what comes next with him. Balin was dope. An interesting gray character, I just wish we knew more about him. He was very powerful, very wise, and experienced and cultured. He had some of the best lines and writing in the show. And Ray Stevenson did an amazing job playing him. He is a great addition to the franchise. I think he's going to end up searching for something to do with the ones. Maybe he's looking for a portal to the world between worlds. I'm not sure. I hope we can see his story continued. With that being said, he's an amazing character. And I loved his orange lightsaber. And rest in peace to the legendary Ray Stevenson. Shin Hadi was pretty cool as well. Nothing too interesting, but I saw a character who did her part. She's also pretty hot, but hot take, I'd say Sabine is hotter in regards to live action. Ahsoka character wise was very good episode five and onwards. She got her positivity and her kindness back, which are big aspects of her character. She was very similar to how she was in Rebels in these episodes. And that's how I hope she would be. Now let's talk about the fan service. Anakin was really cool in the scenes he was in, and it was exciting to have him back. I think the de-aging was good, and better than it was in Kenobi for sure, but it could have been better. It was awesome seeing a wiser version of Anakin, and peeking a glimpse at a dark side, uninjured Anakin. The fight between him and Ahsoka was very cool. The Clone Wars flashbacks were cool as well. The Battle of Mandalore didn't look like that at all though. These scenes were exciting and nostalgic. The problem is, previously in the show, there was nothing that really hinted at Ahsoka being held back by the past. After the flashbacks, there was payoff because Ahsoka became Ahsoka the White, but before the flashbacks, there should have been a nightmare scene or something. 
And even if she just mentioned her regrets of the past to Hu Yang, that's better than nothing. I thought the Night Sister stuff was solid, I guess, but nothing too crazy. It was cool seeing Mon Mothma and C3PO. I thought the New Republic was cool, maybe a little too incompetent, though. Like, sometimes it seems like literally none of them learned from the mistakes which caused the rise of the Empire. Hu Yang was pretty funny, and I liked seeing him back. Now, one of the cons. It was very contrived, and the plot just wasn't natural a lot of the time. So many things happened, so another event could happen, rather than the first thing making sense. Sabine, honestly, was considerably worse in live action. Her maturity stayed the exact same after a 10 year age gap, and her character wasn't as likable as before. She was more whiny and less funny. Her being a force user was pretty dumb in my opinion. In the four seasons and 75 episodes of Rebels, I don't think there was a hint that she was force sensitive. You could say she used the Darksaber decently well, but so did Pre Vizsla and Gar Saxon, neither of whom are force sensitive. I think this is a good example of the story being contrived. I think it would have been better for Ahsoka to have a new character as an apprentice. Ahsoka also basically contradicts what she said to Din and Grogu because Sabine has attachments to all the ghost crew and Ahsoka still trains her. And once again, we've seen Ahsoka multiple times after Rebels and it wasn't hinted that Sabine was her apprentice. Then Sabine goes from not being able to use the force at all to being able to lift a grown man through the air easily in about a week. We've seen worse progressions of power, but this was kind of dumb. It's at least slightly explained by the fact that this was the most important moment of the show. So she needed to summon more power than she had used before. So it doesn't bother me too much but it's a little annoying. A similar problem is Morgan Elsbeth. She was probably never even thought of as being a nice sister until Ahsoka was being made. Because in Mando, there wasn't a shadow of a hint. And you can't tell me otherwise. Once again, I feel like introducing a new character would be better than retconning a big part of a character's story and or background. Ahsoka in the first few episodes was very stoic and dry and genuinely just not interesting and kind of annoying. Hera was okay. Half of her personality was her being a general, which was very simple. Now, Mary Elizabeth Winstead is a very beautiful woman and a great actress. So you know, call me if you can, Mary. I didn't really like the look of Peridia. It just looked kind of bland and boring, but that's just my thoughts. Besides the planet in episode four and five, I wasn't the biggest fan of any of them. I always liked Lothal, but this show only showed a little bit of the planet, which made sense. The big problem, I think, was every planet was either too bright or too dark and bland in my opinion. The fight scenes were pretty rough at times. They weren't horrible, but definitely weren't the best. I'd rather have two great duels than eight decent duels. It was just so unnatural and so unimpressive at times. Especially Ahsoka. I like Rosario Dawson, but some of her fight scenes in that last episode are rough. But you could also give a lot of blame to the directors and fight choreographers. Another thing is that Sabine being stabbed, then getting immediate treatment and living makes sense. But I think it would have just made more sense to have her lose a limb. She still would have needed to recover and would have needed to be rehabilitated, but it wouldn't have made lightsabers look like a non-lethal weapon. And we all knew she wasn't going to die anyways. The Inquisitor looked cool, but ended up being unbelievably unimportant. The ending was pretty anticlimactic and fairly predictable, but it wasn't horrible. The show's story was just not the best and pretty boring at times. The show being simple is okay. I mean, most Star Wars is, but it wasn't consistently entertaining and a lot of what made it entertaining was fan service. I also wish we saw Zeb at least once, and I think Kanan should have had a bigger impact on the show, and he should have been brought up more. I think one of the biggest problems with the show is the characters just translated weirdly to live action, and I think it might have been better if it was animated. Some characters' voices sound different, some don't look the same, some aren't even written similarly. I think if it was animated, it would have been probably better. The characters just weren't the most interesting, and the story was pretty bland. The average score from my rating out of 10 was a 7.8 out of 10. I would say this show was a 7 out of 10. It had some really good moments, but some pretty bland ones as well. I hope the Mandalverse can bounce back because the last two installments were rough. I can't imagine how confusing the show was to people who only watch movies or live action stuff. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like it and subscribe and check out my other channel. The link is in the description. Also, check out my poll. Have a good day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys later. Bye.